Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an artist and I have a project for you today, but before I do, I have two quick announcements. One is that I still have my disco ball up in my studio. I told you I was going to leave it here. I created a piece of art called Disco Chicken. It's in a competition and I would love for you to go and vote for it, but I would also love for you to go and see the two videos. There is dancing involved and I did not dance for no one. So you need to go see it if you have missed it. So links for all that are going to be in the doobly doo. Second announcement. I am super proud of something really mundane that I did. And I've even gotten emails about how awesome it is. So I'm just going to tell you about it and brag on myself. I sent an email out to the art-classes.com subscriber list. And I asked for feedback on a number of very specific things. And I got some amazing, really good feedback. And I implemented some of it. I would recommend highly that you go and look at what I did in response to that feedback. It's only one of the changes that's coming, but it is amazing how much difference it has made in the find a class menu. It's just that little drop down menu. There's some free stuff in there. Nobody has been able to find. And now I found a way to put it out there so you can find it. Yes. Go see it. Right. Now, on to our project, which comes with a story. So I went to the grocery store a couple weeks ago, and while I was there, I had taken two of the reusable grocery bags with me, but I bought more than fit in the bags. I don't know. That happens to me all the time. Maybe it happens to you. Because I remembered when I was in the grocery store, I needed to buy a bunch of bags of chips for a potluck. Well, when I got to the car, I put my two bags of groceries on the floor of the car and all of the chips just on the seat because they weren't in bags. Didn't think anything of it. Got home and was unloading the car and I took all the things that were on the seat and I put them on a table in the garage because why bring them in the house if I was going to be loading them back in the car in a few days to go to the potluck? I took my two bags of groceries, unloaded them, didn't think again about those bags of chips on the table in the garage. A couple days later, I went to load everything from the table and to put it back in the car, which was a couple bags of these tortilla chips and a book. I grabbed the chips, put them on the seat of the car, and I looked at the book and realized something had happened. One of the bags of chips, I've never had this happen before, one of them leaked. These are paper bags, and they are the kind that have, I guess, a grease liner of some kind on the inside, which is why they never leak on us. We never have to think about that. This one, I guess, missed its liner, and it had been sitting on this book. And guess what book it was? It was a brand new Bible that I just got for Bible journaling. It's in the translation that my church uses. And I bought this because I'm going to be leading a meetup this summer. And I was so excited about this new Bible. And now I have a stain on it. Well, my friend Jeanette works with leather. And I asked her, is there anything I can do to get this stain out? And she recommended trying baking soda. It lightened it a little bit. It wasn't as bad. But you can obviously see it's still pretty awful. But as an artist, you know, we have skills that we can fix things like this. So buckle in and we're going to see if I can figure out how to make this work. The baking soda had only done a little bit to get the stain out. I left it sitting on there for a while. I tried baking powder. I tried cornstarch. Anything I could to suck the oil out of there and it just didn't do much to the suede cover. So I figured I could, couldn't make it any worse. So why not try it? So I got out my acrylics and I just have this little collection of them. And I had a toothbrush in there. I must have been doing some galactic stuff previously because that was my idea for this. So I picked out some colors, a dark blue for the base, and then some brighter colors that I could use for making the other kind of shapes and stuff that I wanted. I found one of them that has a bit of shine to it, so I thought that would be good. I had, unfortunately, one that was gold and would, been, would have been nice on this that has some shimmer, and unfortunately, it was all dried up. So there's that. But I do have these heavy body acrylics from Amsterdam, 
and I thought I'd try mostly those and then I also got out another little blue green just so I wouldn't have like all shiny blue green I could have that just for a few spots and then I decided the masking I was going to do for this because I didn't want to do the whole cover the masking would be uh, this frisket paper it's called frisket film it comes in both rolls and sheets mine's on a roll so I just cut off a chunk created a shape because this little shape here the reason that I'm even doing this as a galactic piece is that it kind of reminded me of the shape of something maybe that would be galactic and I just decided to make it bigger and kind of go across that strip like in the, the middle and I was debating whether or not I would block off something on the right hand side too so it would be more of a, a column but then I said, you know, that's just going to be too much brain work. I just couldn't decide, so I'm just going to go for it. And I did. Squeezed on some of the dark blue paint and then started just moving it around. And what I was getting here was brush strokes. And I didn't like having all those brush strokes. I was thinking it was going to feel weird on the surface. I wanted it to almost feel like it's part of the suede. And the suede is so soft. Even if I couldn't get the softness, I wanted that kind of soft texture which gave me the idea to just grab a baby wipe and make some texture out of this. So that kind of worked. It dried much darker, which was good because then I'd have a really dark color to do all of this painting on. And then I just started doing the same kind of thing with other paint colors, putting a couple of you know drops of paint on or squeezing it directly onto a baby wipe. Sometimes I applied it with a brush and then moved it with a baby wipe, kind of depended on what look I was getting. The nice thing about acrylics is that the color that's underneath, if it's dried, isn't gonna move. So you can move just the color on top. So once I got an area to a place that I liked it, then I would let it dry completely and then go back in with another color later. But I was kind of trying to mess with the edges to keep a lot of it soft, let it be built up in some areas. You can see I'm using the brush to get a little heavier pigment. Could have done that with a baby wipe too, but got a little more control and then would loosen it all up with the baby wipe. Or, you know, loosen up the edges so it would be more blendy blendy. I was still this whole time worried about that edge from the masking film because I wasn't sure if just having a weird chunky edge like that was going to look weird on the book. But you know, I'd already done it so <laughs> kept going. Added some of the pink in there and the pink is nice and bright once you start getting it built up. But again, I'm doing it in slow layers and I like the fact that I was getting something kind of purplish with the lighter pink as I let just a little bit of the color lay over top of the blue. And I, that's really what I wanted. I wanted this galaxy to have a lot of depth to it. You know, just a lot of, you know, clouds of the color that looked like they were far away in comparison to clouds that are close by. At this point, I realized that I had gotten away from having that nice, rich, dark color that had soaked into the fabric. So I thought, I'll, let me put some more color on, but painting the blue on top of all those other colors made the blue brighter. And it wasn't darkening quite the way that I wanted it to, like the original coat of blue had done. So I did grab some black and added a little bit of black to it so that I could create some of those tendrils that you see in galaxies, you know, all those little fingers that come off of wherever the main light is. And I wanted to create some focal point in the light, so I needed to have some of that darkness for it to play off of. So again, messed around with the baby wipe to soften those edges and just tap some color into a few more areas. And I was conscious of trying not to do so many layers that this gets thick and crunchy and starts to bend and crack when I use the Bible. We will see how that goes. But then I got a little nervous because a few times I had almost gotten paint onto that band around the middle. So I put some just regular masking tape. This is really lightweight stuff because one of the reasons I didn't use masking tape on the whole cover and I used that frisket film is I was a little worried about leaving that residue behind from a stronger masking tape. So this stuff barely holds, you know, it's just super, super light tape. And I thought that would at least not hurt the rest of the cover. I know that the frisket film won't hurt it. So then I was able to just kind of go in with a little more abandon 
and start putting in stronger colors and not have to be like, you know, precious about that band in the middle. And the, you know, fun thing was being able to go back in on these upper layers, the higher layers, and start to carve areas out again. So if I put in a whole bunch of a particular color, I could use a clean part of the baby wipe and basically just lift out whatever was there that I didn't want there because all the stuff underneath would not move and I could get back some of those darks. So I started paying more attention to that as I went. I've never painted a galaxy in acrylic before, so this was all brand new experience for me. So then it came to the white. I wanted to start pulling in one big burst of white, like the, you know, it's a Bible. I wanted something that maybe felt like creation and painted on some white. I put a little too much white paint in there. <laughs> We'd, we'd have to continue working on it to both soften it and brighten up some other colors that'll be near it so that that wouldn't, you know, I wanted one big spot of brightness, but not quite that much, you know, big chunky kind of thing. But spreading it out and then erasing it seemed to be the better part of Valor. So you can hear, see here, I'm just kind of lifting parts so that I start getting those tendrils like you see in galaxies. I follow a lot of telescope accounts on my Instagram and the Hubble telescope and all kinds of stuff because I just love having somebody just pop some of those galactic pictures in my timeline. It's just so nice to see in my feed. So some of it I started moving with my finger, so a little finger painting going on here as well. And that took me on to the splattering phase, which was what I was really protecting this Bible from because most of this process was not particularly messy, but the splattering would be. And the heavy body didn't work as well as a lighter body, but it did take quite some time to figure out which paint was going to work, so I didn't film all that. And by the way, if you're interested in painting galaxies in watercolor, I have a class on painting galactic watercolor, so I'm going to link that in the doobly-doo down below, as well as the other things that I told you about. So next up, I decided I would remove all of the masking because I wanted to see what that edge looked like. It was kind of bugging me to wonder if I wanted the hard edge or not. And I realized as soon as I peeled that off, I didn't like the hard edge. So I used the baby wipe to start moving more of the color around so that I could soften out that edge and kind of make it splash into the book cover. Now I may decide after living with it a while that I'm gonna change that I could make maybe a whole diagonal across the whole book. I could, I don't know, I could do lots of different options. I could cover the whole thing. But one of the things I think I'm going to do, which I haven't done yet, is to take a really stiff piece of board to put inside the front cover. Because I'm a little worried that I'm going to crack it over time as I start using the Bible, opening it, closing it, and that sort of thing. It is a soft cover Bible, so I'm kind of defeating the purpose of having a soft cover Bible by doing that. But even if I just put it on that outside edge to keep that stiffer so that I don't bend and crack it, because I'm a little worried that acrylic will do that over time, but I can always paint over top of it again, as long as I don't keep getting thicker, because the thicker you get, the more likely it's going to be to crack anyway. So played around with this for the longest time, and you can just kind of have fun with it. You can do this on a whole sheet of paper. You don't have to do it on a book cover, of course. But here's a look at that shine from the shimmery paint. I'll be linking all the supplies that I used and the paints that I used in the doobly-doo if you're interested in getting those. Then my last step was to put something text-wise on the cover, and I decided the word good. I wanted something simple, and good is what God said after he created the heavens and the earth. He said it was good. God is good. He is good to me. There's just lots that I can use as a discussion point if someone sees my Bible and says, why does it say good on there? So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I appreciate you. Don't forget I put all those links in the doobly-doo so you can go vote for my disco chicken and then go see that menu. Let me know what you think. I want some praise for this little HTML. I'll see you guys again in my next video in which I'm going to be doing some watercolor repairs. So hang tight for that. It's, it's a week of fixing it. I'll see you later. Go out and create something every day. Bye-bye.